Hey guys, Zach here with a little video on my thoughts on the ending of Mass Effect 3. As I was streaming Mass Effect a little while ago, a lot of people were asking me kind of, you know, what my what my thoughts were on the ending, uh, what I thought could have been done better, uh, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, stuff like that. So I thought I would uh, just kind of put this in a video for you guys, um, you know, kind of show my personal perspective on everything that went down with the Mass Effect 3 ending. And uh, so here it goes. Mass Effect 3 kind of went in a direction that I feel like they only went in because they were rushed. Through the game, they were kind of building upon this whole dark energy, dark matter type thing. Um, you know, with the sun that was, uh, you know, superheating when it shouldn't have been. Um, they'd been kind of working towards that through pretty much... Uh, quite a bit of the series. I'm pretty sure there's even links to it in the first Mass Effect. And the ending we got didn't even address that at all. So that leads me to believe that they were starting to... They had to deviate from the path, mostly due to probably time constraints or budget. So, I mean, you got the whole story with, you know, Tally, where you find her on the planet with the superheated sun, and that basically means nothing in the grand scheme of things, except finding Tally, considering the ending that they have. So, what I think is that they had, you know, either a budget, and they didn't have enough money to kind of, you know, fully flesh out that storyline, or they had time constraints in which they didn't feel they could do that kind of a storyline justice. So what they gave us was Star Child, and Star Child is the AI, the catalyst, um, who is basically lives in the Citadel. Um, really no extrapolation on him whatsoever, except that he was put there to solve a problem, and that problem is that synthetics will rebel against organics. Um, and that's pretty much one of the first things he says. He says synthetics will always rebel against organics, which is already a problem within the story because of the fact that it's proven wrong through this game, this exact game. You do it. You can have the Geth and the Quarians work together and that's basically a huge part of the game, a huge plot arc. And so you can get synthetics and organics working together and they work fine. Also, it's also proven wrong, as you find out through this game, that synthetics did not rebel against their creators. They, Geth, only wanted to help their creators, the Quarians. The Quarians attacked them and tried to exterminate them, so the Geth fought back in self-defense, drove them from the planet, just so they could leave, live peacefully. So already we have, you know, conflicts right here with, with the story. Is Star Child is already saying incorrect things that have been proven wrong already. Now... Starchild then gives Shepard the option to basically choose the future of the Reapers in the galaxy. And uh, he says this is because Shepard making it to the Catalyst, making it to himself, has altered the variables and says he can't actually do anything on his own and that Shepard has to do it. Um, to me, this is a problem because what the hell is the point of the AI if he can't actually do anything, right? It relies on Shepard, and why would he want Shepard to make these decisions. It feels like, to me, it would go against his inner programming to ever allow that decision upon the things he's supposed to be making decisions of. So that really bugs me there. <clears throat> the whole concept of Star Child really bugged me throughout the throughout the ending here. Uh, once I got it, I was just kind of going like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on here? And uh, I really feel they could have done something really great with the dark energy plot. Um, that could have been a much more satisfying ending to uh, Mass Effect. So, now when we go on to the actual endings themselves, there's like five or four you can do. There is the control, where you control the Reapers. There is destroy, where you send an energy wave and destroy the Reapers. There is synthesize, where you merge your DNA with all synthetic life, and then there is the do-nothing, the bit shepherd plotline, where you just kind of shoot the guy, and then uh, the Reapers just go back to ground ground zero and uh, keep going on with the invasion. So let's go through them one by one, and I'll kind of tell you uh, what I think about each one. It's pretty negative. I don't really like the ending of this game whatsoever. Um, it kind of turned a 10 out of a 10 game to an 8 out of, eight out of 10 for me. The, the actual game itself is fantastic, but once you get to this point, you 
kind of realize that it just kind of shits on uh, the rest of the work. So, first one I'll talk about is control ending. Now, the problem I have with the control ending is that uh, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Um, so, Shepard puts his hands on the little lightning sticks in in uh, the catalyst or on the citadel there, and somehow his body or his his is eradicated and his consciousness is uploaded to the Reapers. And somehow Shepard's consciousness remains intact and controls the Reapers. So, I mean, is his consciousness forever floating around in subspace? Is it, like, uploaded directly into the Reaper's code? Is he, you know, uploaded into a single Reaper that has, you know, priority over the others? It's not really extrapolated upon. It doesn't really make sense. Um, it's just kind of like hold these sticks and you control the reapers like it doesn't really give you any kind of information on you know what's going on in the background there um, which I don't really like I feel like in a game like this uh, you should at least have a little kind of explanation as to what's going on so that doesn't really make sense to me just because I don't I can't really envision Shepard's consciousness just floating around in space controlling the reapers um, it also doesn't make sense that the catalyst would allow that considering Shepard is a human he's not an infallible being, I mean, he could just basically go commando and uh, destroy every uh, living species out there except humans, and have humans control the galaxy because now he is in control of Reapers, and obviously he still has human interests at heart, considering he is a human. Um, so that ending uh, is kind of stupid. I didn't really like that one, but I guess it's a, it's a, they were going for options, right? So the next one I'll go over is destroy. You shoot a piece of the of the citadel, it blows up, and then sends a shockwave through the universe, destroying basically all synthetic life, it says. And it says, oh, you're even part synthetic, so you'll probably get destroyed too. Now, what, uh, what bothers, bothers me about this is uh, it doesn't explain what it means by synthetic life, right? Like, synthetic life to it is, is, is the AIs, they're the artificial intelligences, they have, you know, program commands that allow them to kind of think on their own based on their own programming. But the thing is, is all that is is just lines of code. I mean, that's all an AI is, is they start off as a VI, is just a bunch of lines of code that tells it, you know, what to do, it has certain parameters and all that, and eventually they can start altering their own code to fit certain situations. That's an AI. So it says it will destroy synthetics. Now, when it says that Shepard is part synthetic, now he's kind of expanded the definition of synthetic life to basically just pieces of metal. Um, because that's kind of what was put into Shepard. I imagine he had like a, you know, pacemaker and he had, you know, metal reinforcements on his bones when they were creating him. Uh, so by this definition, we're kind of getting into, you know, blurry, <laughs> blurry parts here is when we're saying what is synthetic life exactly? I mean, does it destroy the actual metal components itself? Um, does it just wipe out their hard drives, their code? what is destroying synthetic life we actually really have to understand like what's going on what is destroying synthetic life to really understand this ending are spaceships going to be harmed obviously they are because you see the normandy goes down uh so is there you know is, is it just their information that's being wiped are they just gonna have to recode all the ships or is it actually making things get destroyed besides the reapers I mean, you know, are the Geth just going to be Geth husks there with no actual programming to, you know, allow them to walk around? Is it frying their circuits? What exactly is going on? Because as we can see, the Normandy goes back up to flying again, so maybe it was just temporarily disabled. And if it's flying that quickly again, it's got all, uh, it's, got all its codes back in and uh, it's ready for flight. So, I mean, if a Geth was just out of the range of the mass relays to avoid being, uh, you know, hit by the blast, could he go back to the other Geth and then be able to, you know, re-upload his code to all the other Geth, and then boom, the Geth army's back up, synthetic life, no problem. I mean, what exactly is synthetic life? Are our toasters going to be destroyed? Uh, is the metal just going to start melting around us? Are our buildings going to collapse? You know, what exactly is synthetic life? We have to really define that. We have to. It doesn't make sense without any kind of extrapolation, without any kind of, you know, delving 
into what's going on here and that's why I don't like that ending either is it doesn't really explain what is synthetic life what is covered by this so it kind of bugs me is I mean you could always just rewrite your AIs you could rewrite them and create them again because you know it is the biological life that created them and obviously that's not affected in the destroy ending so they could always just make more very quickly recode them I'm sure there are hard drives with data stored unless all data in the universe is then wiped I mean they would then they would have to start from scratch but that's not really shown as uh, several ships are still flying and working fine um, so that's not really the case here which leads us to the third option synthesis the AI tells Shepard that this is the final evolution of all life and tells him that if he jumps into the beam then his DNA will be scattered throughout the universe and synthetic and organic life will be merged completely. By doing this you see that every living thing and even all the non-living synthetic things now have like visible circuits <laughs> running along their bodies. Um, what does this mean? I have no idea. This ending bothers me the most. Mostly because what the hell is happening? Is people just start merging with like metal components? Or are we having titanium start getting just like fusing into people if they get too close? Um, synthetics, how do they merge with organics? Do the geth now have like, you know, sphincters growing on them? Are they have bladders? They have to start pissing now? Are they growing organs out of nowhere? doesn't really make sense to me why are there circuits on these people what does that do for them how does it help how is this the final evolution of life how can this AI even say this with certainty um, that would mean he'd have to have you know omnipotent knowledge of all evolutionary tracks and paths to say that this is superior to all others again bothers me because there's no extrapolation it seems like it, their ideas that were just thrown around um, you know, in a conference room, and someone said, wow, that sounds interesting, let's do it. But they didn't really kind of actually think about what this means for the universe, as well as just in general. Um, so you have, you know, Liara, her eyes are glowing green, and the Krogans, their eyes are growing green, glowing green. Um, and you don't really know why, uh, what is the merging process, how are they merged, how does this benefit anyone, uh, doesn't really make sense to me in the slightest, so that ending bothers me the most. Then there's the fourth option, which is mostly just the cowardice shepherd option, and that's uh, just, you know, you don't do anything, you shoot the little AI and he goes, so be it, and then the Reaper just continue destroying everyone. Uh, that's basically the, I'm too much of a pussy to make a decision on my own, so just continue on with the destruction of all sentient life. So, th those are the endings. Um, all very problematic for me, in my opinion. I know there's those who will defend the endings, but uh, I just can't get past it myself, and it really bugs me. So, you know, that's all I gotta say about these those are my opinions those are my thoughts thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching and always have a great day